now we're back. <coughs> and uh, and maybe, uh, John, we can work to bring people some of the video on Thursday, and, 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 and we'll, play that, we'll play that clip if we can. Let me go on today. <coughs> Okay, the um, the point I wanted to make about Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, uh, and what do we need to do um, on a on a in, do daily to experience the transformed life that is pleasing to God, is that we need to re renew our minds daily. Okay, so not only is Health, and we think of from our neck down, maybe, or for our total body actually important, but the renewing of our mind is also part of health and is an important thing. Um, the converted mind uh, is is what is what we serve God with. Okay, it's not out of emotion, but it's out of rational and reason. What's the only way to gain victory over the desires of the flesh, our sinful natures? which contradict the desires of the converted mind. What's the only way? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. What's the only way to overcome that? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. How do we overcome our sinful natures? Okay, I'll fetch it. Hold on. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Oh, there it is. Thank you so much, Ball Man. Ball Man. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the only way to overcome the lust of the flesh is to walk in the spirit. Let's use some other terms and use an example in scripture so that we have clarity. When I say to overcome the flesh, it's Brian. Thank you, Brian. In 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 order to and I'll remember that. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us this evening. In order to be um to overcome um, the lust of the flesh. Flesh is our our propensity, uh, what we are, what we our knee jerk reaction, which tends to be like everyone else in the world because we're products of our environment. Okay, and God calls us out of the world and and, and says, "I'm calling you out, and I want to sanctify you, I want to set you aside for holy use, I want to make you holy." So how is how do we how do we how do we become that, and how are we there? Well, it's because of the renewing of our minds, okay? And then it says that we have to walk in the spirit. And this is what happens. Remember, there was a man who had demons in him. I think he was afflicted. This thing Scripture said there were seven demons, and the demons were chased out of him. What a miracle. But he didn't do anything. And scripture vividly portrays the demons having a monologue, the demon having a monologue and saying, hey, um, you know, cast me out of this guy. Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? And after some time, he noticed that no one when nothing had taken his place in that guy. He called up some of his other demon friends, and they went and inhabited the guy. So the guy ended up with more demons than he had begun with. And the moral or the purpose of the story is, once we have been rid of our sin, and that comes when? When we surrender to Christ, say we want to follow him and we ask for baptism, you come up out of the water and you receive the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit wasn't in us, we would then be empty. And if we're empty, 
Satan will see to it that we pick back up our old habits. And on a daily basis, this is what Galatians is trying to tell us. <clears throat> Galatians 5.16 is trying to say, every day we have to renew our minds. Because if we don't, the old person, that fleshly person that we have put to death, crucified, because our old self is crucified with Christ when we're into baptism. If we don't crucify that person daily, remember Paul says, I die daily, then we let back that old man, that old woman, and we yield, as this text, the previous, my question was, I should say, and that is, how do we get over the desires of the flesh and our sinful makers? It's to walk in the Spirit. Thank you. First Corinthians, uh, Brian, First Corinthians 15.31, I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus, I die daily. Amen. Thank you. Only as we surrender our wills to the control of the Spirit, of the, that's the Holy Spirit, can we gain the victory over the flesh. This is what it means to walk in the Spirit. To do this, we have to make up our minds that we're going to focus on spiritual matters. Otherwise, we can't do it. Now, that's not me saying that. Okay? That's not me saying that. It's said in Scripture. Romans chapter 8, in verses 4 to 6. Romans 8, 4 to 6. It's a companion to Galatians. Romans chapter 8 and verses 4 to 6. There you go. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Hallelujah. So I hope that uh, makes it crystal clear that on a daily basis we have to do what? Renew our minds. And that on a daily basis we have to walk in the spirit. We have to subdue or crucify self. This is part of the sacrifice. When we said God wanted us to make a living sacrifice. So we're alive but we're crucifying our old self and we're alive in Christ. Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. How should our relationship with fellow believers affect our eating habits? Oh, now we're getting to it. How should our relationship with fellow believers affect our eating habits. And I'm going to end it with this question. The answer is in Romans chapter 14 and verse 21. Romans 14, verse 21. Romans 14 and verse 21. Remember earlier, I told you that there were two major chapters or text that people use when they are considering vegetarianism or not. And one is Romans chapter 14, another is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and another is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 
Well, here we are in Roman, Romans, Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. <clears throat> you don't eat meat or you don't drink wine and you don't do anything that makes your brother stumble. See, to be a true Christian means, and Lil said this earlier, in her definition of sacrifice, it was to do something for someone else's good. Okay, do you remember that? It was, it was, it was a very accurate description of sacrifice. And here in Romans 14.21, this is it. See, the, see, see the, 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 the true Christian means that we're dead to ourselves and we live for the Lord. And that affects every phase of Christian living. So that the two guiding principles that motivate all of our actions is I do nothing that affects my right relationship with God, and then two, I do nothing that weakens the faith of a fellow believer. And guess where the companion text to that is from? First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 to 33. First Corinthians chapter 10. 31 to 33. Now we quoted some of it earlier, but I want to post this. I fetched it, I'll post it. Whether then ye eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, so that they may be saved. What Paul is simply saying here is he, and he was, he, he, he was, he was simply saying, that it's about others and that whatever we do whatever we feel is our liberty to do must as a Christian be tempered with how it affects a fellow Christian and there are those people and that's what was happening here uh, and Paul was dealing with some of the issues of the first century church Apostles were still alive. The church was being founded. It was uh, Paul. Paul uh, talks about um, the eating of meat that had been offered to idols. He also talked about um, days, uh, what you did on one day as opposed to another day, um, and all of this is in and around these chapters. So here's your assignment. Um, perhaps this is the first one in which I've given an assignment. But your assignment between now and the time we come back on Thursday at, at 9 o'clock is that you need to read Romans chapter 14 in its entirety. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in its entirety. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 8 in its entirety. Because as we go from here to the end of the discussion that we're going to have on, on health reform, we are going to be focused in, in what those texts present and what they do not present. Because there is a lot of confusion by many well-meaning Christians about what Paul is talking about here. Okay, um, And so I want to come to an end come to a close for tonight um, with that in our minds, that we will read carefully Romans, first read Romans 14, then read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then last read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, okay? Um, and I think you will find it to be a blessing. Are there any other closing comments or questions?
I want to thank you for for joining us tonight, and particularly, I'm particularly pleased with with our interaction and with the comments and the questions that you had, and I, I'm certain that you'll have even more as you do your homework, as you read those texts, even if you've done them before, read them in, uh, in the light of what we're doing now and studying now um, with respect to uh, our, our eating habits, and more importantly, our physical, the physical care of our bodies, what I like to call lifestyle, and um, we will continue. I hope that uh, we will be able to get the, the video of that lady that I talked about. Um, uh, it'd be it just be a, an added uh, a bonus, if you will. And um, I will talk, as I said, on that. I'll talk about the eight health flaws as well, and um, we'll end it that way. So for tonight, thank you. God bless you. I hope you were blessed, and I hope that you have more questions. Let's pray. Yes. He said that we would talk about 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 this lesson afterwards. That would be fine. That's fine. We can do that. Not a problem. Let us um let's pray. Almighty God in heaven, I thank you. I thank you so much for the the discussion that we've had this evening and for the presentation that you allowed. I pray also that what people heard will take root and effect and will call each of us into renewing our commitment to you and looking at ourselves introspectively and calling upon you for assistance, rescue from ourselves in our lifestyles. And then may all that we do be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you.